Hello everyone, this is Funnel V here and welcome to my first Blender tutorial. In this quick tutorial we are going to be learning how to create rings around a planet like, like the rings of Saturn. Now there are two different ways you can go about this. The first method is to create an image in GIMP or import a black and white image of Saturn's rings to import that into Blender and then use that as your, as your texture. In which is what I similar method I did here when I created my desktop background. But however, if you, if you can see here, let me let me move these icons out of the way. But if you if you can see here, it that sort of thing makes this really really grainy result. I'll pull up the full image so you can see better. Let's zoom in here. So this is what I mean. It, if you import an image of Saturn's rings, or if you try to make your rings in a external program like GIMP, you some, sometimes get these really grainy results. And in addition, you don't get to see the results live in Blender in case you don't like their, how it came out, or you have to go back and redo your texture. So, so because of this, I found a new method, albeit by accident, on how to create rings in Blender. This here is a result of the other method I found when I created this new planet called Aloxam, which I, I might post sometime. But if, as you can see, the rings in this image are much more smooth, crisp, more well-defined, and just a lot less noisy. Now for how I created these rings, these rings are generated entirely in Blender. Let's pull up the blend file here so you can see how I how it looks in, in the Blender viewport. These rings here are completely generated inside Blender. They're procedurally generated, no external textures were used, and they just look gorgeous. Now I'm going to show you how to make these rings from scratch. So here we have the default cube. Just go ahead and delete that and, and just load up your planet. This spear here will act as our planet for this tutorial. I'm not going to show you how to actually make the planet like you saw in the results, but so this will just be a placeholder. I might do the planet in another tutorial, but this tutorial is about the rings. And as for the rings, you add in a circle. You drag out the circle, you expand the circle to wherever you want your outer radius of your rings to be. Then you go tab into edit mode. Then you hit E to extrude, and then you hit S and scale down your extrusion to wherever you want the inner radius of your rings to be. So here we have our rings. We're going to go into orthographic view, simply because it, it just looks better when you're doing space scenes. And we're going to go into cycles render. And we're going to go into viewport to rendered viewport. We're going to delete, we're going to change our current lamp to sun. And we're probably just going to angle our sun just a little bit so we can get a better perspective on the rings. So this is what our, our render looks like so far. This is what the rendered result will look like so far. Nothing yet, but now we're actually going to start making the rings look actually look like planetary rings. So, so select your mesh, put in a new material, and this will be our rings. Now making procedural rings is actually a very simple process. So the first thing you have to do is that you have to put in te texture coordinates input texture coordinates. Then we're going to add vector mapping. We're going to plug generated into, into our mapping node. And we are going to put in texture, gradient texture we will change this to spherical. 
All right, this is what we, what we have so far. As you can see, there's nothing over here yet because we still don't have our shaders in. But then what we're gonna do is that we are going to add in texture and a noise texture. Insert the factor from the gradient texture into the vector of the noise texture. And this is in these this is what this is all that the ring texture is. It's this right here. Now we are going to actually add in our shaders. Oh, hang on, I forgot one thing. You want to have the location set to negative 5 for x and negative 5 for y. For z it won't do anything because this is a two-dimensional object. What this will do is that this will center your spherical texture because I've noticed that if this is set to the default value of 0, it puts it off to the side when our, when our ring should really be should really actually be circling around the center. So that's what that will do. So now we put in our shader, add in a mix shader. And put that right here. Put in another mix shader and plug this mix shader in to on top. Now we're going to plug two shaders into our first mix shader. We are going to add diffuse on the bottom and we are going to add trans translucent on top. All right, you set the the value of the first mix shader to 0.8. Then you take a transparent shader and plug that into the bottom node of the second mix shader. Then you add color, bright contrast, put factor of the noise texture into color, then take the output of that and put it into the input of the second mix shader. Then what you want to do is that you want to go back to color, mix RGB, plug the color from bright contrast into the top then put put it in the output into the displacement. Set this to 0.6 or 0.7. We're just going to set to 6.5, 0 0.65. 0 .65. And let's render this and see how it looks. So now we have a material for our ring, but it doesn't look like rings yet. But that's because we need to but that's actually because we actually need to make it actually generate the ring. But first thing first, we're just going to add a subdivision modifier to the ring so it so it just so it looks prettier. Now, as for to for the settings, the the top setting scale in a noise texture controls how big your main rings will be in detail controls how many subrings you will have with if within the main ring Sm smaller smaller scale will give you larger main rings while smaller detail will give you less subrings while more detail will give you more subrings i just keep distortion to zero we're not going to worry about that so anyways if i change this to 10 and crank this all the way up to 16 I mean, I didn't mean crank this up to 10, I mean 15, but and give that a render. You can see that we're starting to see something that looks more like rings, but it's just the, but it's just this one solid solid ring. There's nothing in between. It just looks like one one big solid ring. That's not what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is that we're going to crank up our brightness and our contrast. Now what brightness does is that brightness controls how dense your rings are. Higher brightness means that you you have less dense a ring, one being no ring at all, zero being one big solid chunk, 
like, like what we just saw. I typically have mine at 0.5. And while I have my contrast uh, cranked up to 0.9, what contrast does is that contrast controls how defined each individual ring is. So, so 0.9. So having your contrast down to 0.2 will give you a result like this, where you have more space between the rings. Why, why, while if you crank your contrast up to 0.9, you still have more the same amount of space between the rings, but it's just that each individual ring is more defined. But if we turn down brightness to 0.3, you can see that there's less space between the rings and it looks a lot more solid. And if we put this up to 0.7, we have no ring at all. So typically the maximum for brightness would should be 0.5. So, but this is our result for with 0.4 as we I really like this result. As you can see here, that looks really, really good. However, we can play with this further. We can crank this up to 25, which I think is the setting I have it in the res in the result I showed you guys earlier. So cranking the scale up to 0.5 gives us a result like this. Scale 25, detail 16. This looks like this looks really good. What distortion, actually distortion does do something I just remembered. Distortion will change to the position of your rings. So if we change our distortion to 0.6, render it again, now we can see that we have a different arrangement of rings. So let's recap this. Scale controls the size of your main rings. Detail controls how many smaller rings within the main rings you have. Distortion controls the position in arrangements of the rings. Brightness controls how dense your rings are, while contrast controls how well defined they are. And that's pretty much it. This is the whole material right here. Copy it if you want. That's the whole reason why I did this tutorial. And this was my first ever tutorial, so I'm sorry if I wasn't the best or if I wasn't quick enough. Any constructive feedback is appreciated, as it could really help me a long way. And I really hope you liked my tutorial, and, in, and I hope you can apply this to putting rings around your planets in, or in space scenes in Blender. Good, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.